Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. How are we? Hi, friends. Hey, gang. Doing pretty good. How about you, Andre? I'm doing stellar. Stellar. Nice. Yes. It's like been, uh, now I feel bad about my pretty good thing. I feel like uh, I can that up good. a little bit. How about yourself, Scott? Yeah, doing pretty well. Yeah, good All to see right. you both. Have you replaced the Perrier with Red Bull yet? Still going for the water. <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good, all good. I should Folks, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Thursday. It's uh, moments after 1 o'clock, and I do stress moments. Uh, and what are we going to do today? We are going to have our usual web page test live, and we're going to do a fantastic audit. And I do stress fantastic. Why? Well, we are going to play around with the brand new features that we unveiled. I was going to say unleashed, you know, uh, but that we unveiled yesterday um, to the jubilant audience. Uh, it was a bit of a surprise, but people have been enjoying it. Would you not say? I, I would say Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's been really, really fun yeah. to uh, yeah. to see the feedback streaming in, and um, and and also from the the kinds of power users that tune into this show often um, to hear some ideas about you know little tweaks they'd make to um, the way things are recommended based on their preference, and that'll definitely inform what we're what we're doing in the future. So that's that's awesome. Yeah, it'll be. I think it'll be really interesting. I mean, it's already been interesting, like Scott said, seeing like some of that the different takes on some of the pot potentially suggestions, like situations where maybe they work, situations where maybe they don't work really, you know, they don't work quite as well, or um, which we always knew was going to happen. And this is always going to be a bit of a, one of those things where we're kind of adjusting and learning, you know, as we see these things applied at scale, like what does that as the impact, you know, what other things are out there that, you know, could be exposed. I know there were some good suggestions about going a little deeper on the network and all sorts of stuff we can do. Um, but yeah, it's been, awesome and the feedback has been really really good and it seems like some people are having lots and lots of fun playing already so yep. it's good yep. you, you know uh, it's only been 24 hours literally like one to one you know one o'clock yesterday one today it's felt like a week <laughs> it's like oh my god there's so much stuff going on it it, it has been very eventful and uh, kudos to both of you, by the way. Uh, I know internally um, we were chatting away and I was sort of uh, expressing my praise. But, uh, you know, uh, both of you and the rest of the Eng team has, uh, have been doing fantastic work. For anyone who doesn't know, there's a lot going on in the background. And, uh, you know, you guys can't tell, but they both have their, uh, their sleeves rolled up. Um, but it's been uh, it's been fantastic to watch uh, this amazing product, and uh, we've been you know casually calling it game changer. I don't know if we could say it's casual anymore. Uh, we've been I think uh, surprised uh, by how well people have taken to uh, the the announcement and the product and unsolicited praise coming uh, left and right. So that's been uh, that's been great to see. Yeah, uh, it's been awesome to to see people uh, feeling that way. I mean, I, I know just uh, many of the reasons that we we built this were, were based on our own experience uh, running these kinds of experiments ourselves, and um, how much time that took, and uh, how hard it was to do them accurately, and um, all of that. Uh, you know, making that easier is um, pretty rewarding. It's fun for us to play with, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's great, too, because and I think uh, uh, this comment has come up a few times, the fact that we're going to empower uh, folks with some, you know, no code experimentation. You know, that's come up quite a few times. And that's been great to see as people who are just potentially not, you know, technical SEOs or, you know, engineering directors, wink, wink. Um, who will be able to make some of these changes and watch the results uh, sort of come in uh, in in sort of like this one click uh, operation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, you know they the the different categories of of roles of um, kinds of people who would be using this tool was, was really front of mind when we were mm -hmm. building it. Um, sure. You know, I think it's 
it's really common for business owners uh, to know that their site has performance or usability or accessibility issues um, and not necessarily know what to do about it. Even yeah. if they could run a web page test in the past, we weren't necessarily uh, surfacing information that was um, you know, friendly enough uh, and, and clear enough to non-developer audiences. Um, so this is, uh, you know, a big change in that regard. Not only can, uh, you know, a non-developer kind of uh, user of web page test get a good idea of what's wrong and what's causing uh, problems that they can observe themselves, but also try to fix it and just see, you know, what what happens to uh, to change it um, for the better. And then they could talk to their development team from there and say, looks like you just need to make this little change here. Yeah. Um, that's a big change from even a week ago for that that particular. Uh, that's person. true, actually. So, you know, actually, it's a big change from 25 hours ago, literally. You know, <laughs> so it's uh, having made the announcement 24 hours ago. Bad joke. Um, but what we're going to do is uh, get into the classic uh, web page CS live and auditing and whatnot. Um, I know that you to have a great set of. Um, sort of conversations and audits and, you know, um, showcases of some of the features that we, we unveiled yesterday. So what I'm going to do is uh, see myself out the stream. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to Anthony, who's in the chat right now. Hello, Anthony, ye of podcast that we're going to be on soon. Good man right there. Um, so, gentlemen, have yourself a great uh, web page test live, and I'll be in the background when you need me. Sounds okay, great. Thanks, thanks Andre. Hey, Tim. Hey, man. It's been a bit since we've done one of these. Uh, been a minute since we did one of these live audits. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't been on here in a while. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no, I know. It's been. Uh, yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be good. So we we talked about a few different ones that we thought we might want to dive into. Um, Some audits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. A few um, different sites. Yeah. Do you wanna Do you wanna share away? Do you think uh, everyone here has seen? what we've launched just in general yet. I feel like that's a good place to start is not assume that that, that, that it's the case. So can fire up, um, just jump right into a result and show it off in there probably in the context. How about, yeah. okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool, cool. So I'm gonna share, sweet. What, what can you see? You can see everything, right? I can. We're good? All right, cool. Yeah, um, I'm on the homepage now. Uh, I think most people who are tuned in have probably uh, would would recognize this. Uh, there's a little little information here that's added, uh, a little video promo vid that um, talks about what's what's launched uh, this week, and most of that takes place on uh, the test uh, result pages. So I can dig into uh, one of those. Wanted to get a uh, about that one, sure. So when you're on a result page, uh, not a whole lot has changed as far as you know this section down here. Um, you know, you you get a a view of the um, the metric numbers uh, in a in a high level view, but this section here is new, um, and this is a bit of a preview of a much larger um, new feature of, of, the, um, of the result pages, which is called opportunities and experiments. Um, so they're kind of teased with a little summary on, the, um, on the, the test result page here. And you can start to get an idea of uh, how the page is um, performing uh, under a few categories. So in particular, is it quick? Is it usable? Is it resilient? And we've broken down a bunch of diagnostic tests that we run uh, into one of uh, those three categories. And uh, I'll show you how those break down in the opportunities page. So for this particular test, uh, I've done a, a test run on, I'll show you, it's called the metric times. If anyone has um, been tuned into our uh, streams earlier uh, yesterday and today, uh, I showed this off a little bit, but um, it's it's sort of a, a unit test suite <laughs> in that it's a, um, a fake news website that has a lot of bad practices built into it on purpose 
so that it fails every diagnostic that we run on our uh, opportunities page. Um, so lots of blocking resources, uh, you know, big JavaScript frameworks loaded just to render. I was going to say, I think that was text. until that happened. My favorite thing about this page was the dog. I mean, it's still up there. It's pretty close. But then my second favorite was when uh, we realized we need more blocking JavaScript. Oh, and yes. so there was, I think there was literally the ticket was like, let's add React so we can block. Yeah. Them. So we <laughs> loaded React um, on a, off a CDN. Nope. which nice. already bad start and then uh <laughs> and then all we did with react was uh was render this headline here so the rest came from the server but we just wanted to get something something passing through there so anyway um lots of things uh you know that are not very user friendly about this page uh which works out well when uh, we run it against our opportunity suite you can see that all of these red uh alerts um, represent diagnostics that were run that resulted in uh, opportunities that we discovered um, that could be uh, could be improved depending on um, if you change your code through a tip that we might recommend or uh, actually try changing the code directly by running uh, an experiment, which is the new, I would say, killer feature that comes with WebPage Test Pro. Um, and you can try it out. Uh, I, I ran the test on this page in particular because um, the metric times is uh, is set up to be a bit of a sandbox for anyone to run tests, uh, run experiments on. Rather, um, all of the experiments are available if you're testing that particular site. So you can try all of these out as long as you have a, a free uh, web web page test account. So once you're signed in, you can run them and. Uh, if you run a, a test on another site and you have a free account, um, we do allow one of these um, experiments to be free. So that's the, if we recommend the defer render blocking scripts experiment, then um, you can try that one out for free. And the rest of these are just part of the pro user plan. So um, the way it works, if you haven't used it yet, these are additive, so you can add them to your cart, so to speak. And all of these uh, optimizations will be applied to the experiment run. And uh, for each experiment run, we also do a control test run that uh, that goes through the same experiment running proxy, but doesn't apply any changes. And the reason we do that is to try to get a, a fair comparison between the experiment run and the control run, um, just because passing it through our environment tends to speed up a site just a little bit. Um, it, it puts it on a, a global CDN, and um, little differences uh, exist that you um, that would that would change the speed even from your original site. So we compare that to the um, the experiment run to try to get uh, an accurate comparison. And then uh, let's see if maybe I have an experiment result recently that we can look at. This was just to give an overview of the general workflow. So I'm going to go to an experiment result here. And when you run an experiment, it ends up um, showing this page with the differences. And in this case, I ran uh, three uh, experiments. So I added three. Four. And oh, four, you? sorry. Yeah. 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 I'm working on my counting. Thanks, Tim. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, in this case, you can see that um, the combination of those four and the way I ran those four uh, ended up making the, the experiment slower than the control. Um, and that's useful to know too, right? So um, uh, in particular, if you're comparing the process of, of running these kind of, um, of experiments of uh, optimizing things, to doing this manually in the past, um, you know, we would often do a, a great deal of work, spend a lot of time producing these experiments, which would sometimes lead us to to learn that they weren't uh, a change that was was worth making to the to the site. But in the process, that took a lot of time too. So it's really useful to know when something's slower or if it's faster. You will see it here too in green. Um, just kind of varies based on uh, you know how the experiment works out on a given site. Um, 
So that's that's how the, the result pages work. And then from there, you can always go back and add different ones, um, yeah, and, and run them again. So it's uh, sort of a, a continuous process. <clears throat> Yeah, so I mean, one of the things that's like important, I think, to note about these two, right, is like, or the thing that's kind of fun about it, I guess, in case it's not apparent, is like the information that's surfaced here in the opportunities could technically be derived from web page test data before. Like all of this information is there, which has actually made the building the opportunities and experiments kind of fun. Um, like there's a ridiculous amount of data there. This is just us trying to make it a little bit more um, obvious what's going on, like remove the the need to sort of always, I mean, you're always going to want to at some point need to go back to the waterfall and all the stuff that's there. Um, mm -hmm. That's important. It's there for a reason. Um, but we're trying to make some of those insights a little bit more apparent and, and obvious here. Yeah, um, exactly. Um, so yeah, I was going to say, this was actually one of the, um, I did send over, uh, Scott, a pair of links, but I see you've got one there. Um, yeah. Google Flights is one of them. Um, we could start yeah. there. Do you mind bumping the sure. font size just a hair too? Somebody asked that in chat. Perfect. Sure. Thanks, man. How's that? Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a test uh, that we ran on uh, Google Flights this morning. And just so uh, just so we can clear about the site we're talking about here, this is uh, you know their their travel sites for uh, travel site for booking flights. Um, it's a good one to run experiments against uh, currently anyway because they've got this large hero image, and uh, we were noticing in some uh, test runs that the uh, largest contemplal paint metric is um, reporting pretty slow. Um, so how soon that that hero image um, ends up painting to the page in a slow uh, connection speed. So in this case. Um, we're on 3G. Um, it would obviously, you know, arrive sooner if we were on a, a faster mobile connection. Um, but this is the one I happened to test this time. Um, so we can see if there are experiments that are recommended um, to, to speed that up. So I'm on the opportunities and experiments page for this test run. And we can see already that different uh, opportunities are um, elevated, and some are actually resolved as um, not a problem. So in this case, uh, you know, this is a highly optimized site. They've um, they, they've already taken care of making sure that they're not blocking rendering with any um, of their JavaScript and CSS um, files. But we are noticing a, a largest contemplal paint time that's higher than two and a half seconds. Um, so in that case, we've got the particular image in question in this case that's causing that metric to be slow. And we have a couple of experiments that are recommended. Um, in this case, we've got, uh, we can preload the image, which is a, um, a link element that the, um, the test runner will add to the head of their site, um, causing the browser to fetch that image at a really high priority immediately. Um, the second uh, uh, experiment that's recommended here is a priority hint. And that's pretty cool um, because these are a feature that just landed in browsers very recently. Uh, Chromium browsers in particular still, right, Tim? Yeah, so Chromium right now. So you got Edge yep. and Chrome and all that kind of stuff. Brave, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, in this case, we're marking it as, uh, you know, this this will only only make an improvement, only be noticed in Chromium browsers. Uh, it'll be ignored in others. So it's, you know, a safe, uh, recommendation in that regard. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to run one. Nope. <clears throat> yeah, while you're running that, just to give folks, yeah. and you can run it and chat for a second, like the um, yeah. the preload and priority hint thing, because I think the distinction is kind of interesting now. Um, you know, preload used to do this thing where it would jump to the front of the line. Uh, you used a preload immediately, that resource basically jumped the queue. Uh, and came in at a really high priority above other resources uh, in the page. Um, that actually was like a bad thing. It turned out to be a thing where people would preload fonts or preload whatever, and suddenly that font would jump the queue over the actual critical CSS you needed to be able to display the page or potential JavaScript that might have needed to be high priority. Um, Pat right. Meenan actually fixed that fairly recently in Chrome. Um, so 
the distinction between the two is kind of interesting, I think, because preload really helps with that discovery. Like if it's a resource that the page doesn't find um, early in, like, like early on, it has to, you know, it finds it later on on the page or it's inserted dynamically or it's a background image, something that takes it a bit to discover, preload will let it be discovered right away there in the head of the page. Mm -hmm. um, it no longer actually impacts the loading priority. But that's where priority hint comes in, and that impacts the actual loading priority of the resource. So that doesn't actually change the discovery. It gets discovered at the same time as it would have before. It's still in the source at whatever point in the source it was. But now instead of fetching, you know, maybe at a low priority initially, I think, for images until it knows what's in that viewport, you know, we say, hey, load this high. And so right away, the browser is going to prioritize it, and, uh, adjust it accordingly. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I find the distinction yeah, kind of interesting because they both play in slightly different ways for that op potential optimization. So it's always interesting to see like which one is going to make the impact. Yeah, I agree. And um, just uh, just for a little background on this, um, we can see that the experiment's running here. I bumped up the number of runs um, just to uh, hope that we get a uh, get fewer outlier runs and get a better median. Um, results. So the more test runs you run, uh, the more likely we're able to have a, a really good, um, you know, accurate comparison between the control and the experiment. And it'll use the median uh, result for both um, to make that comparison. Um, and that's kind of useful to know because if you run an experiment that you're pretty sure, uh, like in this case, we're pretty sure it will uh, improve um, the LCP metric, for example. Um, but if it comes back as a result that doesn't look like it made a big difference in that metric, it could mean that you just had some uh, some some strange network conditions in some of the tests you run because this is loading a live website. Um, so you might want to bump up the number of runs or just rerun it um, and look at the individual test runs and see, okay, is the site behaving like it you know like it should? Yeah, that's a good call out. Um... Yeah, whenever I'm doing like the optimizations, I like to bump the run count for the same reason. I hopefully smooth out some of the outliers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember when we, we used to do audits for clients and nine runs, I think, was kind of our standard, um, sure. you know, for, for being able to get a good median. <clears throat> So this question coming in about what do we recommend for the LCP preload, um, fetch priority equals high, or both? Um, is a good question and it gets back to, so like, this is why the, this is both, I think why we keep the waterfall around for folks who want to dive into that level, but it's also why experiments can be pretty darn cool. Um, so first off, if you're not sure you can run both or you can run three, they're additive as you pointed out, Scott, right? So you could really kick off, you know, you're curious, like which one's going to impact my site more try the preload one, try the fetch priority, try them both paired and see what happens with all, you know, in all three cases and which one gives you the boost that you're kind of hoping for. Um, we could also look at the waterfall and derive that like by looking at what's happening there. And I think that's still probably worth showing at some point here just to kind of, you know, help people understand like where that's coming from. But I think that's the beauty of the experiment too, is again, um, if you're not uh, you don't go reading around performance waterfalls for just the fun of it, right? And you're not sure, like, from there what to do with it. It's so fast to kick off three of those experiments right, you know, next to each other and find out quickly which one is going to be the biggest bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this experiment finished. And again, a lot of test runs, um, also uh, 3G connection. So each of those runs uh, took, uh, what, at least... 10 seconds or, or maybe more because of um, how long it takes to finish loading that page on 3G. So we were waiting a little while for all those runs to complete, um, but we have a pretty useful result. Uh, we were expecting to see a priority hint improve our LCP metric, and it's a half a second faster um, in, uh, in this particular case. Usually it's closer to a second uh, when I've run this experiment on 3G. So it varies a little bit, um, but I think that's a you know, pretty significant result. You can see it in the, uh, in the timeline down here. This is in half second increments and you can compare them and see that, all right, I wanted my LCP image sooner and it appears to uh, have done that with 
a very easy uh, change uh, from a coding perspective. Um, what we're doing is you know, adding that attribute on the image. And if you want to verify that the change was made, um, you can go into, so all of these test result um, navigation links go to the experiment run. Uh, and you can actually view it as you would any other test run. Um, so if I want to dig into the details of what happened in that uh, test run, I could go to its detail page. And what's kind of neat about this view is it has some custom metrics that were run in uh, along with the, the test run. And one of those uh, captures the rendered HTML. So you can see if the transform uh, was applied. And look at that. You can see that it found this um, S, this um, flights SVG, and it added fetch priority high, which is the, um, the priority hint um, that we needed to apply to that image. So if you're ever in doubt, um, you know, about like whether or not it applied in a way you expected, you can look at this output if it happens to be something that's changing the HTML and uh, and find it there. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, and so this, you know, this is one of those optimizations too, like you mentioned this in the beginning, you ran it on 3G, right? So if you wanted to see, you know, what happens with this in other scenarios, you could run this on cable. Um, certainly mm -hmm. the we would expect that any benefit would be a lot lower. Um, and that's helpful information too, I think, because one of the things when you're doing this optimization work is you, you know, often to be able to keep getting the priority, the budget and the headcount, everything else to continue to focus on performance, you have to be able to justify your results and show like, what was the impact? And that can be tricky because, you know, depending on knowing where to look. So if you do a little bit of homework ahead of time with this and you can say, okay, well, it looks like on fast connection speeds, this isn't going to do much for us. It's going to help those folks who have, you know, if they're coming in on a spotty network or slower connection or whatever it happens to be, those folks are going to benefit. That also gives you some clues on where to look after it goes out. If you have RUM data and how to mine that and, you know, figure things out from there, mm -hmm. um, which I think mm -hmm. is nice. Actually, if you want to go back to that real quick, I thought like I just wanted to show one more thing on that preload versus priority hint on the the comparison page um, yeah. of your control and your after, just so that it was, it was good luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nailed yeah. it. Yeah. So if you can go down to the actual waterfall, so I think just to show like where like for folks who are curious about the under the hood part, if you yeah go all the way over to the experiment. Control, perfect. Um, either one, pick us. Either one is fine. So this is with the experiment applied. So in this case, request number two, right, is our LCP thing. That's that flight three SVG. Um, yeah. So we can see it kicking off really early, right away when the HTML comes back. Um, and if we go back to the control run without the experiment applied, so cool. Yep. Request number four. So now in this case, it's still requested pretty early, but it comes in after those blocking CSS and JavaScript because those are given the higher priority on the network. So mm -hmm. that's where this uh, improvement happens, um, is like jumping up that priority, getting it fetched right away instead of later on. Yeah, exactly. Nice. OK, that's cool. cool. I like that. Um, should, I, uh, should I do a create experiment? Oh, sure. What do you want to do? Hmm. I'm going to do something useful or just something fun. <laughs> I mean, if we've got something useful in mind, fire away. <clears throat> the create see. experiment stuff um, is pretty cool. We haven't really talked about that at all yet. Yeah, I'll scroll through these a little bit, um, just because we we tend to just focus on that first um, defer JavaScript one for a lot of demos. But yeah. there are really so many in here that um, that are really useful to to try out. Um, a lot of them are are uh, in conflict with each other, so you may not want to choose. Um, you know, for example, inline and uh, async, the same resource. Um, once it's inlined, this one won't find it, <laughs> you know? So they, they kind of work in order like that. Um, but, uh, but a lot of these can be applied um, in combination with each other and they don't, uh, they don't conflict, they can complement each other. Um, let's see, we did the, uh, the LCP image. Um, this one's pretty interesting. It's actually generated a little discussion in the uh, in the issue tracker too um, about 
you know, what we should recommend in these cases. But, um, you know, lazy loading images can be helpful and harmful, uh, depending on how you implement it. Um, one of the ways it can be harmful is if it's, for example, your hero image, if that's lazy loaded and it's in the main viewport, um, uh, then it'll arrive later than, uh, than ideal, right? Um, so in that case, we would flag uh, images that are in the critical viewport, which is the, the viewport that you see here. Um, depending on the browser that is run, it'll change um, the width and height. But um, in this case, it's saying, ah, we, we noticed some images are in that viewport um, that are being lazy loaded. You might want to consider um, not doing that. And this, this experiment would allow you to uh, remove those lazy loading attributes. Um, but it also leaves it up to you. You may know best. You, you probably do know better than the tool in a lot of cases. Um, so these are just you know, sort of uh, observations that we that we noticed that you might consider um, changing about your page. Um, the way fonts are loaded, uh, if you're seeing um, fonts take a long time, uh, custom fonts take a long time to, to display. Uh, there are a couple of recommendations around that, um, changing their behavior so they load more procedural, um, self-hosting them, uh, requesting them earlier. Um, there are also experiments that make things potentially worse on purpose. And those are useful to use for diagnosing uh, resilience issues. So for example, what happens if I cause my fonts to time out um, and, or hang indefinitely? Um, will that break you know, some expectation of our site? Are we using icons in fonts that have a really poor fallback, for example? Um, so it's useful to know these things, even if they're not necessarily aiming for a, uh, an improvement on performance necessarily. Um, yeah, the font loading one in particular, I think is interesting. I know there's been some discussion too on Twitter. I mean, there's been debates about how to properly load fonts for since the dawn of web fonts, probably. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's interesting because there's different trade-offs, I think. I don't think there is any sort of one perfect way to load them. Uh, because there's a lot of different variables right now in terms of, yeah, are they blocking display? Or are they not blocking display? Are you preloading? If you're preloading, does that mean end up contending with, you know, other network resources? Like there's so many variables into what could potentially impact how the font loading works on your particular site. And I think that's why we're like, I mean, again, you know, having a, a place to scratch pad that a little bit and play mm -hmm. with that, like, yeah, mm -hmm. what happens if it does time out with this particular approach? What if, you know, we did preload it? What happens there? Like playing around with all those different variables very quickly is nice. The ability mm -hmm. to iterate fast is so important to be able to find, you know, that sort of ideal, meaningful optimization that's going to apply. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of these experiments just would have been uh, prohibitively, uh, you know, a long time <laughs> to perform. And you, in the past, you'd need to prioritize and prioritize which ones you even want to try because you know that it's you know if you're working for a client all of that is uh, billable time right so um yeah just being able to do more is kind of uh yeah. it, it's pretty awesome um we didn't get into uh layout shifts but um in this case uh once again metric time is uh flagging or being flagged for um images that are uh, delivered without width and height attributes. Um, that's a pretty recent uh, improvement that happened in browsers where um, if you uh, provide the width and height attributes on an image, it can instruct the browser uh, on the aspect ratio of the image before it even loads it. So it can make room for it in a layout and not, not let it push content around as it's loading. Um, in this case, we uh, we know, the tool knows the width and height of the images that are causing problems. And if you run this experiment, it will uh, re-deliver the page with those width and height attributes added to the image tags. Um, so you can see if it causes your CLS metric, one of the one of the core web vital metrics, to go away or to go to zero instead of uh, 0.2 in this case. Um, that's an awesome one. I like running that one. Um, I saw... 
Yeah, I saw that one. improvement too. It was always kind of interesting because I guess like, I don't know, I've always been infatu- like fascinated by the fact that once you can start measuring something that you couldn't measure before or, or you know, tools start to get better around something that weren't, didn't exist before, like how quickly that exposes issues that we never really paid attention to. Yeah. Um, and the timing on this was kind of interesting, right? Because like CLS came out before that, we knew things shifted around and people complained about it, but we had nothing to measure. Like it just wasn't something that people paid attention to. Then CLS comes out, people start paying attention to the metric. Now the work around aspect ratio was spearheaded by Jen Simmons, who I think was she Apple at the time or Firefox at the time when that happened. I don't remember. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, but, but yeah, her work on it so, is amazing. Yeah. So interestingly, mm-hmm. it came from her who was at a browser that did not support CLS, but um, it was one of those things that kind of got ignored until that happened. Um, yeah, and even if we didn't, fascinating. I mean, even uh, without a metric to measure it, it's a very obvious yeah. um, hindrance to to using websites that we all experience. You know, the page just shuffles around while it's loading, um, and it's it's a nightmare if you're reading an article and then it gets pushed down and you have to scroll and find where you were. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, it's awesome that we have tools to, to make that better now. Um, further down, we have uh, accessibility issues. We've been running accessibility uh, uh, an accessibility suite against um, test results for a few months now, um, but not really exposing any of the information until, um, until this week uh, that it finds. So this is great. Uh, we're running uh, the Axe. Um, what is it? Axe Dev Tools, Axe Tools. Um, yeah, Axe. Yeah, against the yeah. Uh, WCAG uh, compliance guidelines. Um, yeah, and this yeah, will be so. just a start. By the way, it's going to be. Um, we definitely have a lot more that we want to do with the accessibility stuff. I know that you and I have talked for a while now about like trying to figure out some other key metrics that we could pull off there, um, mm-hmm. and we also do things like like one of the things I think we want to do is you know we can capture the accessibility tree um and it would be nice to be able to display like give everybody kind of a clickable you know way to kind of parse through that accessibility tree and see exactly what's in there so there's other yeah. things we have coming so i just wanted to make it know like we're pretty pumped about the accessibility stuff now getting rolled out on a web page test and we've got um pretty good ideas for where we can take some of it so yeah yeah so far um you know we expose these uh these findings but we're not really offering experiments for um, for accessibility issues yet. So um, I know uh, some uh, some pretty great people in the accessibility uh, field are looking at this tool already this morning and pretty excited about um, coming up with custom experiments that um, they could recommend to us that might might be relevant um, for uh, for running and offering um, accessibility experiments. So that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I was, I got st- uh, a little distracted, but I was on my way to this section at the bottom here uh, called Create Experiments. And this is collapsed by default. It's a bit of a power tools section, but it's a big section. There's a lot in here. Um, and what it does is uh, sort of opposite of everything above it in the page, where, whereas Everything up here, all of the experiments are recommended in a sort of reactive context. Uh, we see a bottleneck, and we recommend something that might fix that bottleneck. Um, but down here, we're just sort of opening up the tool for custom use. Um, so you can change the page uh, in in ways that we wouldn't even know to recommend to you, because you know it better than we do. Um, or uh, perhaps you want to test um, something that you're planning to add to your site soon, um, and you want to know the impact on uh, your your performance if you were to add that. For example, uh, a chat bot or a, a reviews widget or something like that um, usually comes in the form of a script tag that you put into your uh, your source. Um, you know, someone on a marketing team who knows they need to add that soon could uh, open up a test result and try it out here. They could add, uh, well, in this case, I was testing it with just some arbitrary style tags. Um, sure. But in, in this in this rule here, I can just add any old HTML right to the end of the head element. And uh, it'll it'll do that in the test result. So in this case, if I were to run, well, I'll, I'll just run this test. 
it'll make uh, everything have a background of red. So you can just sort of get a sense of the impact of it. Of course, that's not relevant <laughs> to performance testing, but it shows you the power of, uh, of what it's offering. So I'm going to kick that off in a, a new window. There we go. That'll be loading over here. Um, we can go through a couple of other ones here. Um, there's uh, text find and replace. Um, this might be useful if you have um, some transformation on the HTML that you want to make that um, isn't uh, easy to do with the ones uh, with the other experiments we offer up here. Um, it even uh, it, it supports regular expressions and all that, so pretty powerful. Um, and then further down, we have all of the experiments that are recommended up top in very prescribed ways, um, but just open-ended. And you can pass whatever you'd like into these and add more. Um, an interesting sort of uh, way that these run is that a lot of them will look for whatever you pass um, in these fields. They'll look for uh, those values in the page. Um, to be able to apply a change to it. So uh, this is not going to add a script tag that doesn't exist in the page already, but it will uh, add a defer attribute to any scripts that have a, a source of uh, containing my script JS. Um, and that goes for a lot of these. So like uh, you could make them asynchronous instead of deferring them. Uh, you could add aspect ratios. And some of these come with a little configuration. Um, so again, this is more of the advanced tooling section. Um, we might, uh, I hope, actually, we find ways to make this a little more user friendly um, in the future. But some of these come with syntax recommendations. So like, since we're, uh, we're offering the ability to add uh, width and height to any old image in the page by its source, um, you're going to need to provide the view the, the width and height in that case. So um, there's some special syntax you use for that here. Um, let's see, inlining files. You can inline uh, um, a, a CSS or a JavaScript file, um, and it'll actually fetch it and dump it right into the HTML content, um, preventing that external request, which is a nice performance pattern, especially for small files that are blocking rendering. Um, preloading, removing preloads, pre-connecting to domains that are used later in the page, for example. Um, lazy loading, removing lazy loading, minifying, uh, adding priority hints, removing them. <laughs> uh, font display changes. And uh, lastly, um, some of the options that WebPageTest offers on the home page already, uh, which I could show here under the advanced section, we're also um, offering in um, alongside experiments, because sometimes it's useful to run an experiment um, and maybe block or single point of failure uh, a response or two. Um, so you get, you get those in addition. Oh, and while I'm here, bulk testing is also something we added this week, right, Tim? It is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so if you want to just for the folks who want to go just intense, like fire off a bunch of tests with the same settings against a bunch of URLs, either listing them out here, or you can take a CSV of the URLs and it'll kick off a bunch of tests all at once for um, whatever. So like I tend to use it for, you know, if I want to fire off some competitive testing, for example, like, I mean, just hypothetically speaking, if I wanted to see, you know, how timcadlick.com loads compared to scottgel.com, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I might fire the, the URLs in here and just your nightly stuff. run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's not, it's useful for kicking off a bunch at once. Um, these tests will get going, and then once they're started, you'll be able to you know kick through and, and see the results for them there. Yeah, nice. You know, I was um, just so thinking. Testing. Yeah. I, wanted to... I, I was just thinking, if you don't mind, just for fun. Oh, look um, at that. <laughs> what's that? Nice. No, this that was injecting this, the style one. Yeah, this was uh, an example of injecting some arbitrary HTML. In this case, we just to show the power of the tool, this added a style tag at the end of the head. And right. inside that style tag, it had a rule that made the background of everything red. Um, again, 
maybe not the most useful or useful at all <laughs> experiment to run, but it really shows just how much power you, you have in this thing. Um, you can do a lot. I mean, it, you know, adding a style tag to the end uh, of the head could be really useful if you wanted to combine, say, uh, font display swap experiment with um, some uh, typography CSS to make sure that the size, the height of the um, the two fonts, the fallback font and the custom font are the same. Um, yeah. So you could apply those in combination and make sure you don't get a reflow when the fallback font is showing before the custom font loads. So there's just so much. I, I mean, I think we've been talking about all these ideas for blog posts about uh, you know experiments and custom experiments we can run with this. There's also like, really there's funny. a couple of things I'm thinking of that like, um, like Carrie Roberts has a uh, like a CSS diagnostic CSS file for exposing all sorts of anti patterns, right? Like you can inject that in if you really wanted to, and just get the mm -hmm. visual mm -hmm. of like what's going on there. Or mm -hmm. I know like he also built like that slow files. You see him experimenting a lot with like this uh, slow file service where you can arbitrarily have scripts or CSS that takes X amount of seconds to load. You can inject those in like if you wanted to get really scientific and start playing around with like you know, what happens in our situation if we're, you know, if a blocking script kicks in here or something, I don't know, there's, just, I feel like there's, a, it'll be really interesting to see what people use the custom experiments for, because it mm -hmm. really is just like an open playground. Yeah, yeah, fun stuff. Did you want me to um, pull up anything else while I'm here? Well, how are we doing here on, uh, on time here? Were we supposed to be kind of? Yeah, it looks like we're past we, two, so. We're scheduling, yeah. So maybe just I we could answer a couple of the questions that I saw floating around. Yeah. All right. First, yeah. so one from Eric. Hey Eric, whoa, got some inception going on there. That was fun. <laughs> uh, uh, so for the significant portion of HTML recommendation, will be consideration be added for generated HTML that's hidden by default? Specifically, his use cases were off-screen mobile nav and SVG icons. That's pretty smart. Um, Potentially, we could look at doing something like that at some point. Um, right now, I think we're basically just what comparing the diff of the generated HTML before and after and seeing what's you know how much yeah. it changed. But right, yeah. I mean, case. I think um, you know it, if you're using the tool uh, frequently, you'll be seeing recommendations change a lot in the coming weeks because um, you know it was sort of the nature of launching this thing and getting it out there that. Uh, we need to see a lot of tests thrown at it. Um, you know, different sites are going to expose different uh, recommendations, and it'll it'll allow us to to tweak um, the way that we respond to different conditions. So, um, I think that rule in particular is is the aim of it is to try to identify sites that are overly dependent on client side rendering, um, and. It's a difficult one to uh, to figure out for a threshold because um, it's not just the size of the generated DOM that matters uh, in that case. Like it could be only two or three kilobytes that are generated, but that's the whole page and it's actually useful. Um, that can be a lot of HTML. Um, so we went with percent as one of the leading um, differences. You know, what percentage of the page? And I think if it's over. I think it's over 5% or something like that, then we we just let you know about it. Um, but again, this is this is one of those things where we really want to, you know, emphasize that it's not supposed to be a grade. <laughs> like it, you know, run through run this tool. We're not going to give you a badge to put on your site that says you're all green on web page test opportunities. Um, it's it's there to help you find things that could be an issue and maybe aren't. You know, you know best. Um, so yeah. yeah. Or, that's, or that's that kind extent. of a two part answer. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's a good answer. And I think that's what we're kind of after is like that continuous improvement, which is why, you know, we aren't looking at we are looking at, uh, like you said, all sorts of like, we've got thresholds on things, but we're trying to basically expose a bunch of these potential opportunities. Um, no matter what we're seeing, otherwise, just because like, Test it in a different scenario, and that that thing that doesn't seem to impact anything right now on your cable connection in Chrome from the US might mm -hmm. actually be a huge difference maker uh, if you're testing 
uh, I don't know, on Firefox or if you're testing on an Android device or if you're testing from a different country or a slower connection speed, like that's why it's always going to be a little tough for us and why we probably don't want to, you know, necessarily hide a bunch of stuff, even if they look like they might be okay in one situation, just because mm -hmm. we want to encourage folks to keep testing in different situations, different variations and see what happens there. So, yeah. 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 We've also been um, pretty intentional about making the thresholds somewhat friendly. So if yeah. you have an incredibly fast site, it might not be picking up ways to make it even incredibly faster. Um, and that's kind of okay. <laughs> like if you're already that fast, you probably know how to use web page, web page tests to dig in and find ways that you can optimize it further. And maybe we'll find ways to, to recommend you to do that too. But we also wanted to make it um, a little forgiving and, and rewarding to sites that I think really need the help the most. And those tend to be the sites that all of us use every day, you know, sites that are in the top 10 or whatever, um, news sites, things like that, that are just really hard to make fast. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I think running, we've been running a lot of those through the tool to, to make sure that uh, recommendations are relevant and hopefully helpful, move the needle, you know? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, um, you know, the best, I know there's a couple of questions around other metrics or specifically surfacing different things. The biggest thing I can say there is, you know, um, please, you know, have a look at uh, our GitHub repo, get file issues. That's the best way to get stuff in front of us. It also lets us, the other big benefit of that versus other places um, is that then folks can pile in on, on it too. And things that are really important, you know, or to the community or to a bunch of people start to really surface up. But that's how we used to prioritize a lot of the work. Yeah. Um, and we know like experiments and opportunities we are pumped about and we are also not done with. Uh, so there's no. a lot of stuff we <laughs> want to do. There's a lot of stuff we're hearing folks want to do that are some great ideas that have come out already. Um, so keep those coming because we are watching that super, super close. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, a lot of the planning for what goes into pro is going to take place in the open now. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we have all sorts of cool ideas that we're going to move over to the tracker. I know, you know, we talked about trace route being yeah. uh, a bigger factor in um, resilience yeah. and, and maybe cool. uh, yeah. maybe we just include some trace route runs um, and see how your how your time to first bite looks around the world. Yeah. Um, you know, things like that. I'm really excited to yeah, me know, too. keep rolling these out. Yeah. In a lot of ways, this is where the fun starts. So yeah. Andre, you're muted. Hey, Andre. Or you're quiet. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. You look great. Oh. Well, thank you. Um, speaking of fun, that was a great session, gentlemen. Um, our first and inaugural uh, WebPage Test Live with Ops and X. Ops and X. No, X. Is that what we're going to call OPEX? I don't know. <laughs> there, there are too many syllables, uh, opportunities and experiments. It's like, it's too much. But either way, um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your valuable time, especially in uh, a moment of a launch where we know exactly where you're going right now after we close this stream. Uh, you know, heads down, trying to get some things done. So we do appreciate your time. Um, for everyone out there, um, if you've been on Mars, Welcome back. We just launched opportunities and experiments yesterday. It's been 24 hours, 25 now, actually. And um, if you're not familiar with it, uh, go check out webpagetest.org. You'll see some changes. Uh, we also had a blog post. Let me see if I could find it here. Eh, I'll post it on Twitter. Or you can find it on Twitter. I think we pinned it to our uh, webpage test Twitter account, which you, oh, there we go. All right. The, a little uh, banner override there. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> help you out, buddy. I didn't know that could happen. That was yes. pretty cool. Uh, but definitely give us a follow at Real, Real Web Page Test uh, on Twitter. Uh, obviously, you can follow Scott at uh, Scott Gel on Twitter. Okay. And of course, uh, Mr. Cadlick. Mr. Cadlick. Uh, you can cool. find him on, on, tw uh, on Twitter cool. as well. But um, that being said, I do want to remind people of a few things. Um, we are going to follow this uh, live up with one Tuesday, and it's going to be Tuesday morning at 8.30. Um, and we're going to be playing around with these a bit more. We're attempting to have um, 
you know, some friendlier hours for APAC and other territories like India, uh, where we have a lot of users of web page tests. So that's going to be Tuesday morning at 8.30. We'll announce it on the Twitter uh, channel. And the other thing I want to mention is that we also have a page where we're going to be posting the majority of our events, whether we're streaming and or making some appearances somewhere. We're getting a lot of requests now for people who want us on our their podcasts and whatnot. So um, let us know through Twitter if you have a guest slot for us, because we'll be happy to come by and talk about all the big features that we've had uh, going on the last little while. So that being said, I think that's it, gentlemen. Did I, am I missing something? Um, no, that, that was great. Um, I noticed yeah. a couple, a few more questions came in, oh, so okay. maybe we can address them. Uh, oh, well, means uh, afterwards. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, also, um, today's what the second, um, Mr. Joe, you'll be speaking next week in person, right? Yeah, there's a little event at um, Catchpoint headquarters in uh, in Manhattan on what seventh, uh, I think. I believe it is. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna. Uh, well, I think you tweeted out the info for that. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll put it out there again for people who are in New York and who'd like to attend and see some of this uh, in person. Um, yeah, it's filling up. I'm, I'm not sure what the cap is, but yeah. I think there's still a little room. Okay, um, there we go. Yeah. That being said, folks, thank you very much. Uh, once again, check the schedule. Our next appearance should be Tuesday morning uh, at 8.30 a.m. Um, and I think that's like 2.30, like... C C E S T something like that and six o'clock India time that's for sure uh six p.m. that is so that being said folks thank you very much Tim Scott merci again and thank we'll you. catch everyone soon thanks right. yep bye